Hey there, my name is Peyton Macy's and you're listening to AnyCast. AnyCast is about anything and everything. We have some cool guests on sometimes, or sometimes it's just me. But enjoy today's episode and I hope you learn something new. Welcome on back, everybody, to AnyCast. Uh, it's pretty exciting today. Today is the very first Any Haunts podcast um, ever. And uh, I'm just going to actually, I just came up with this idea because I was thinking, what uh, cover art will I put on this podcast episode? Uh, so the one that you see on this episode means it's more tame and more so for kids. Um, uh, whether like concepts are more kiddie. Um, like the content in it, uh, mostly content matters what I'm talking about with these. Uh, and then the other one has like more iconic horror movie characters and it looks darker. Uh, and if you see the other one, that means we, uh, the podcast is a little bit darker for the uh, week and, uh, the content isn't necessarily, uh, great for kids, but Hey, if they listen to it, uh, depending on what it is. I think in my schedule, nothing's too bad. But anyways, today we are reviewing one of the greatest, probably the greatest, um, sorry, Halloween movies of all time, um, produced by Tim Burton and directed by, uh, the guy who made, uh, Coraline. Uh, I can't remember his name. Let me look up his name. I'm a little bit, um lost here uh henry selick directed this film and tim burton produced and it is tim burton's the nightmare before christmas now first before we even talk about the movie let's actually talk about um why it's called tim burton's nightmare before christmas um so tim burton actually wrote a poem called the nightmare before christmas and then i guess henry selick read it um and was like we could make this an interesting film tim burton of course did the molds with a team probably of people uh making this unique style Uh, he produced it of course so he got to shape everything into the unique style but henry directed where the shots you know typical director stuff um tim burton also wrote for this movie of course um along with two other people um tim burton michael mcdowell mcdowell and carol caroline thompson all of they were all writing on this um and then of course this is an animation family fantasy uh yeah and it was released in uh, 1993 so it is 29 years old and yes next year i will definitely be talking about this but on the youtube channel next year um to honor the 30th anniversary uh, of this so um okay so uh i wanted to mention if you've seen my um or if you haven't seen my youtube video on mandela effects it'll be linked in the description and guys you guys got to watch that one it's six minutes and uh, 44 seconds. I'm sure a lot of you have watched it. Um, there's 36 views on it. Uh, but hey, it did amazing. Uh, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Uh, it did pretty good on the views. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm totally blanking here. I'm <laughs> sorry. Uh, I talked about how people actually uh, miscon uh, like they uh. A Mandela effect commonly known is a lot of people remember that Tim Burton actually directed Coraline um, when actually he didn't. And I explained that on there. It kind of does connect to this. But anyways, let's actually talk about the film. 
So, of course, the film's premise is Jack Skellington is the leader and the king of, pump, of Halloween Town. He's the Pumpkin King, of course. And every single Halloween, there's this ceremony where he is, I guess, birthed into a skeleton. He goes from the Pumpkin King to Jack Skellington. And it's a momentous occasion. It's like, it's Halloween for them is like Christmas for us. Um, a very momentous and amazing day. Um, you know, um, unless you're Jewish, then I guess Hanukkah. Um, and then, of course, uh, he, we learn that actually Jack doesn't really like Halloween. He's getting uh, tired of it. And uh, honestly, one of my, I, I think probably my favorite scene in the movie is the entire Jack's lament when he's walking through the cemetery and we see zero for the first time and then of course we get the iconic um hill spiral hill um and jack sings about how he is lonely and how he doesn't actually want to keep up with halloween he's just tired of the same old thing and he wants to go out and adventure in the world because he knows that there's something out in the world that is so far different from halloween um and he wants to discover that so the entire premise of the movie is that, you know, uh, Jack is tired of the old Halloween. He wants to find something new. So he ends up stumbling into Halloween or Christmas town, uh, and misinterprets it a lot. Uh, at least Santa Claus. Uh, and then he tries to take like elements of Halloween and then throw it into christmas after studying christmas he couldn't get to the root of it so he ends up just crafting it um, himself with the help of the halloween town and then of course they make christmas um and you're probably at this point thinking well where's the conflict in this movie well for one uh sally isn't really fond of jack's plans sally's zombie um more or less a zombie doll thing um, and she is just not pleased with Jack's plans of turning Christmas into a scary thing. Uh, and so she kind of is conflict, but not really. I mean, she does kind of, I guess, pose questions to Jack, like, why are we doing this, blah, blah. But the real conflict is when Jack hires three kids, Lock, Lock, Shock, and Barrel, to kidnap Santa. Um, that song is interesting. They sing about killing Santa and uh, kidnapping him. So, you know, that's awesome. Uh, and then they write off, Lock, Shock, and Barrel write off on their uh, four-legged bathtub and show up to the Easter Bunny, capture him, go back, Jack jump scares the kids, I guess you could say, and the bunny, and uh, then they get Santa, and then they feed Santa to Oogie Boogie, who is, of course, the actual villain of the story. Um... If you've never even seen the film, me just explaining it to you is probably messy. I could have probably written out a better way of explaining it. But this is a timeless classic for many reasons. I think it's because it's a musical. Uh, it's for all ages, you know. Um, it's not scary. It's really nice and a little bit heartwarming, I guess, at the end. Um, the character actually does learn a moral and a lesson. Um, and there's a pretty i mean it's a pretty good story um it's pretty original as well the story of nightmare before christmas is well i mean how it's shown is original i guess it's not really original base story because the base story is just like guy is tired of the same old thing wants to do something new and ventures out but then the second half of the story is like totally original like i'm gonna re well maybe not with the recreating something that is new but recreates it in their own way to make it comfortable i guess uh, i guess that's kind of like i don't know if that's a used storyline out there or not um definitely the first part is but i don't know about that second part but it's i mean it's basically very original um interestingly enough though um disney made well okay so there's a little bit of complexity with this. So it says that Disney actually made the film. But if you actually look into it, Touchstone Pictures, of course, made the film. 
And then Disney saw it, I guess, at a screening or something and was like, you know what? This film is awesome. Um, we're going to say this is okay for kids. And then I guess they like handed Tim Burton a lot of money and he was like, sure, whatever. And then boom, it's a smash it. Um, and now it's a Disney movie. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because it's really interesting uh, that they did that. Because if you did not know, Tim Burton was originally supposed to uh, he actually was working on the Black Cauldron and specifically doing designs on the Horned King. They said it was too dark and disturbing for kids. Uh, I don't know if the actual sketches that he made of the Horned King and all the other demons in that movie um, are out there on the internet, but if they are, great. Uh, he has a very unique style, so you would definitely know if it was him. Um but yeah, they, Disney first, when hearing about Tim Burton, they hired him for something, and then they fired him saying, hey, this is not cool. Uh, you're going to give our kids nightmares, and this is going to just destroy the Disney name. You're fired. And then he made this with Touchstone, and Disney owned Touchstone, and they were like, you know what? We're going to say this is a part of the Disney brand, a Disney original. And I guess Tim Burton was fine with that, and hey, it's actually really nice that he was cool with that because Disney did make one other movie with Tim Burton, actually. Um, with, yeah, were they... Actually, I take that back. They made three other movies with Tim Burton, two of which, in my opinion, are just awful. Of course, those are the Alice in Wonderland reboots. reboots and then the other one is Frank and Weenie, which if you actually didn't know about Frank and Weenie, uh, I'm not going to talk about it actually here. I'll talk about it uh, if I do end up discussing Frank and Weenie this October. Um, but yeah. Uh, so honestly, my favorite part of the movie, uh, like I said, the lament scene where he's just like singing about uh, how it's the same old thing. And he's tired of it. It's a pretty good scene. Uh, I just Some of the shots in this movie drag on a little bit too long. But overall, the cinematography is pretty good. I think um, when the making Christmas scene is really interesting, how they shot it, because there's like this big gap of instrumentals. And if you're listening to the song on Spotify, you're probably like, what's going on? But if you watch it, uh, it's like Halloween Town versus Christmas Town, and they're mimicking each other in the steps. Um, so like uh, one that I remember is when um, <clears throat> there's this elf, and he's like filling the stockings full of gifts right and it's like on a conveyor belt the uh, the stockings and then um the the little transition is actually pretty nice so we get this we like you the viewer i guess are in the stocking and we see this like uh elf look down he like puts this pipe thing that just shoves all these presents in it goes to the next stocking and then when he puts it, or I don't know how many stockings go by, but in one of them, he just puts the pipe down. And then when they, he, when um, it pulls out, we actually end up seeing the clown um, with the tearaway face from Halloween Town take off the box, uh, the lid of the box, and shove a jack o' lantern um, in there. And, of course, the entire scene when uh, Jack is delivering presents is very interesting. Um, with the shrunken head, uh, there is, in, like, the evil teddy bear vampire and the evil duck. Uh, interestingly enough, I'm going to try to find a picture of this. Uh, but there's this... Uh, the kids in that scene with the flying teddy bear um, they are actually wearing some uh, cool pajamas I guess you could say uh, because they are wearing um, oh gosh they're wearing uh, Mickey Mouse and Donald duck i know donald duck for sure but i wasn't sure on the mickey mouse part that's why i'm trying to find uh, the clip of that uh nightmare before christmas um 
primary for Christmas. Uh, my gosh, my brain's not working today. I've had a very long day. Uh, it's Sunday when I'm recording, as of the day I am recording. So, of course, it's a longer day um, because I wake up at, like, early in the morning. Uh, I can't even remember when, but I wake up early. <laughs> That's all that matters. Um, all right, so I found the clip, but I got to go through the stupid Grammarly ad. Um, all right. I just like all, a lot of it. I think the effects definitely, like, some of it is outdated, but others aren't so bad. And um, I do enjoy a lot of the original ideas. Like, I'm watching this scene and, like, the uh, dead reindeer, you know, being made. That was cool. Um, the entire thing where, like, Jack uh, declares that Zero will lead the sleigh. Um, the fact that it's, like, a casket. It's a little bit uh, dark. But, you know what? I mean, this is the Nightmare Before Christmas and Tim Burton. But, you know, he rides in a casket for a sleigh. Um, it's an interesting uh, reimagination, <laughs> I guess you could say. Uh, there's a lot of little interesting things about this uh, uh, movie. Uh, lots and lots of uh, different interesting uh, things. I do like the giant snake, the orange and black snake. Uh, that one snake actually really i think like tim burton might have a fascination with snakes because in beetlejuice of course there are snakes um and then there's that and they were kind of made around the same time but pretty close together okay so yes in the scene in which the teddy bear and the the evil teddy bear and the evil duck are placed um these two kids go up there's a girl who is wearing like a nightgown and it has like Mickey Mouse's on it, uh, her nightgown, and it's uh, yellow. And then the boy has a white shirt and uh, there's Donald Duck on that. So that's pretty interesting, of course, since like Disney claims that they like, made it, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm watching the rest of this because I do remember one of my favorite scenes <laughs> Uh, of the presence was of course when the poor fat kid uh, gets chased by the evil jack-o'-lantern um it, it's pretty awesome uh there was the one with the two chinese kids and there's like a bunch of bats in the tree that one was interesting i mean i would definitely be terrified if i woke up to that i mean all these things that happen i would definitely be terrified um if I was getting strangled by a reef or if a giant orange and black snake was eating my tree. But of course, the scariest one is when poor uh, Bob, we'll call him Bob, I don't even know his name. But when poor Bob is running away from the evil jack-o'-lantern, uh, jack-in-the-box that jumps at him. Uh, of course, that's, that's the worst. Uh, it's also very interesting how this movie depicts humans um, because they don't really show their faces uh, ex except for the kids. Uh, and all you see is bodies and um, hands. It reminds me of the Peanuts, actually. Um, I'm wondering if, now that I'm thinking about that, I kind of wonder if like uh, Tim Burton got any inspiration from the Peanuts. Um, but yeah. Uh, if you have not seen The Nightmare Before Christmas, you have to watch it. Uh, before I do end this podcast, though, I want to take a brief moment. Well, actually, it probably won't be too brief, but um, I want to actually, I'm going to do something. We're, uh, we're, we're going to do something fun here. I'm going to walk you guys through Haunted Mansion Holiday. Um... Because if you don't know what Haunted Mansion Holiday is, okay, I got a 2022 version right here. So Haunted Mansion Holiday is uh, the Haunted Mansion's way of festivity, I guess. And of course, the best way they could do this, uh, Disney could do this, is of course by taking The Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, I'm actually going to look up when was Haunted Mansion a holiday made because 
um i'm pretty sure it's a more uh recent thing and when i say recent i mean like maybe the late 90s or early 2000s um but i mean when you enter the haunted mansion that you see like jack sitting up um on the uh like shrine thing i don't know he's sitting up on something i can't find out when it was made anyways he's like sitting up um on top of the sign and looking at a snowflake which is nice you see the pumpkin king um scarecrow having a christmas hat on i guess now this year um it is interesting how they do change the portraits in this ride and also the fact that like the portraits change in many different ways uh the first one um like they all look like peaceful little portraits we have one of the um actually hold on before i keep on talking and making no sense <laughs> i gotta think here so uh first when you remember how in the normal haunted mansion there was like these portraits and they stretch they would stretch and all this stuff um so the uh, stretching portraits are actually stained glass um, and they all like change and whatever uh, they like they look nice oh wait I'm so dumb the stretching portraits aren't stained glass the stained glass ones are just what you like walk in the queue and then the stretching portraits are actually stretching portraits um, they reveal the characters of the nightmare for Christmas they use um, projections for the entire like hanging thing and instead of that um they have um jack like jump scare and break the glass i do like when you walk by the portraits um you have this one where uh you see santa claus at first the first portrait is actually like you know like the changing portraits that's what i'm talking about here i should have specified but anyways this we see santa claus and reindeer and then we see uh like zero just kind of fly up and then it all turns into like jack and the gang and like his uh, skeleton army then we see a normal um snowman and then when uh the portrait changes it's melted and has turned into a pumpkin uh snowman anyways i'm not gonna walk you through all that but really i don't even I don't even actually have time to walk you guys through the whole thing sorry guys um i'm gonna kind of speed through so basically the monsters take over the mansion um the seance scene is very interesting instead of using uh instruments they're like those cards uh which is interesting floating lights uh cards to tell the fortunes i guess uh, and then my favorite scene, the ballroom scene, of course, the thing that everybody loves. Uh, Jack has crashed his sleigh, I guess, in there. And then every year they make a new gingerbread house. Is it edible? Yes, I think. But by the time it's made, no. Because it has a lot of mechanics to it. It's a very intricate gingerbread house. Every year, I think every year it has been um, the Haunted Mansion itself. And then there's like new elements to it this year i guess it's a uh, lock shock and barrel uh and they have landed on top and the mansion is frozen a bit but there's a lot of oh and there's a guillotine i guess <laughs> that that's nice um but there's like a lot of in that scene there's like it smells really good and all this stuff um and then the attic scene is just the giant snake um, of course the iconic snow hill is there um on the haunted mansion holiday uh even our friend the hatbox ghost is there he has a festive um makeover i guess you could say jack skellington of course greets you instead of the caretaker and stuff like that but yeah uh, i wanted to talk about that as well but hey i just wanted to talk a little bit about one of my favorite um halloween movies the nightmare before christmas i'm sorry i came unprepared today um I should have wrote written the script last night but i was uh oh gosh sorry i was um doing the video that we did yesterday me and liam um you could see it yesterday 
by the time this is out. Right now, I'm actually uploading it. But um, yeah, yesterday we did a, a very long tier list video, but it is also a very cool and awesome tier list video. We ranked food. Um, it is the ultimate food tier part one. And when I say I should put a, I should have also put like drinks um, and stuff. We started out, I think, let me pull it up. It, it's cool. We did like four tier lists, uh, which if you've seen my tier list videos, you definitely know how um, insane that can be. Um, okay, so we started that out on soda. And then this thing is an hour and 12 minute video. Um, but honestly, if you guys sit through it, you guys will have a lot of fun with it. Okay, then we do sauces. Then we do like snacky foods, which has some dessert in there and candy bars. Uh, we took a lot of time on that one, actually. Then we did cereal. And then me and Liam talk a little bit at the end. So, hey, if you want to see our opinions on cereal, and we hit, I think, like every main brand. Um, snack foods. Popcorn is on there. Chex Mex. Muddy Buddies. All the rest. Um... If you want to see our opinions on sauce, um, I mean, almost every sauce was on there. I mean, they didn't have like every fast food sauce listed. Sadly, they, they did not have the Chick-fil-A sauce. So I had to use something that we didn't even try and put it up there as Chick-fil-A sauce. Um, I would say the most entertaining parts of that, ha like in the entire tier list, um, the soda one. It was pretty cool. We agreed on almost everything. Um, the snack one was extremely entertaining because there was some weird stuff on there. The sauces was very entertaining. We did have a lot of disagreeing points. Uh, same thing with the snacks. And then um, the cereal, we we mostly agreed. That one was fun, though. Um, he did disagree with my placement of cornflakes, I think. So that was fun. But anyways, that is in the description. Um down below um i don't even know what else i said i was going to put in the description um anyways i guess i'm just going to put all my uh any haunts um also like i've said many 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 times i do have a giveaway for the first five chapters for free of my book um watch this video in the description all my all like the links it'll say in the description what the video title is just click on that and it should take you to youtube uh, so yeah i hope you have enjoyed today's podcast if so please share um hit that notification bell because uh honestly notifications on podcasts is very important for me whenever i listen to podcasts it's very important that i know when the new podcasts that i love um, are out so if you love this one, hit that notification bell. And if you don't actually know where that is, um, I'll actually explain this real quick. So if you clicked on my show, not on an episode of my show, just my show, if you're at the very top where it says any cast, if you're on Spotify, all you have to do is click the follow button and then there should be like a notification bell. If you're on Apple, um, at the like top of my page for the uh, podcast, you should be able to hit a plus and then i think it should be like save to your library automatically download if you want um you can do that that'd be great if you guys download my pod um please do leave a review on apple also send in uh, voice messages but you need to turn on uh, notifications in your guys settings to get the notifications of course uh, so whenever i upload a podcast and you want to listen to it boom you can um and yeah that's that's all that's all folks uh come back next week as oh you know what actually i'll just tell you guys what we're gonna do next week because why not <clears throat> um call on back next week folks and we'll uh we'll talk about um ah we will talk about a lesson in revenge uh we're gonna be doing a movie view review another tim burton one this one is far darker not suitable for kids because of the content uh, regarding the movie uh, but we're going to talk about that movie we're probably also going to talk about another tim burton film that is for kids so what i'm going to 
yeah, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to have half of the episode as the uh, not so great <laughs> for kid, and then the other half be the good for kid. Um, or no, we're, we're going to start it off on the kid friendly, end it on the bad. Uh, so we'll do a double Tim Burton movie review next week, one of which is going to be Frank and Weenie, and the other will be Sweeney Todd. Um, so watch those movies if you want, and uh, see you next week. Hey there, you might be wondering, do I have merchandise? And the answer is of course. Of course I have merchandise. Go down into the description down below and you can find the link to the merchandise. We sell t-shirts, hoodies, a lot of mugs, um, some long sleeve shirts, some uh, stickers, stuff like that, like die cut stickers, and all that fun stuff at the AnyCast shop. Powered by Teespring. Shirts are $25. Long sleeve shirts are $30. Hoodies are $45. Mugs are $20. Stainless steel water bottles are $28. Die cut stickers are $10. Stickers are ranging from $8 to $10. Notebooks for school or notes or whatever you use your notebook for is $20. And canvases are $28. Go and have fun in the AnyCast bookstore, or not bookstore, just store in general, and buy some merch.